Curvature. We're doing a little video on curvature. Sure. Um, let me take a look at this. We got four common forms for curvature. <clears throat> First is our conceptual definition, where it's the change in the unit tangent with respect to the arc length. <clears throat> all right, that's all fine and dandy, but it requires an arc length parametrization, which can be rather taxing at times. So then we went through um, how do we get rid or how do we find the curvature here, not with respect to arc length, but with respect to our parameter t. After some manipulation in a chain rule of our um, differentials, we found the form where it's the change in the tangent with respect to t divided by the magnitude of the change in the position with respect to t. <clears throat> um, yeah, and then we went into um, another derivation where you didn't have to find the unit tangent where you could just go off of the vector valued functions. And here we see it's the magnitude of the first cross the second divided by the magnitude of the first cubed. And then there was a special case if your function was a planar function. Your curvature in the plane is the magnitude of the second derivative of the function divided by one plus the first derivative squared and then all that to the three halves power. We'll talk about how we get from here to here in just a second. But for now, what if we were presented with a vector valued function in the wild? Could we find an arc length parametrization and use that? Yes. Tasking. Could we find a unit tangent and use this? Yes. But why don't we, since we have a vector valued function, use our third definition that requires only vector valued functions? All right, let's go ahead, let's go through that. We see that we need a couple of parts. We have a first derivative and a second derivative. We're gonna cross those. We're gonna find the magnitude of that cross. Also, we're gonna find the magnitude of the first derivative. Great. And then maybe we'll evaluate it. So let's go through, let's get those pieces. Our prime team. That gonna be, that gonna be zero. E to the T and one, fine. I'm gonna keep on keeping on. My second derivative, our prime t, prime prime t, that's zero, e to the t, and zero? Sure. Now let me cross those two. I'm gonna cross those two. Our prime t, cross our prime prime of t, t he, t he. So we're gonna take our determinant. Sure, where we um, put the vector i, j, k above it. And when we're doing our cross, crossing, we're using our determinant, and it's whoosh, whoosh. And we see that going to be, oh, when we come back around, that's minus e to the t. Sure. Now our second column blocked out. Whoosh, zero, minus zero. That gets us zero. Sure, there's more. If I cross out my third column, I'm going to get zero, minus zero, and that's also zero. Excellent. So now what I want to do from there is I want to, Find the magnitude, and I find the magnitude of the first cross the second. And that's going to be the square root of minus e to the t squared plus zero plus zero. Both of those squared, of course. After the dust settles, we find this to be e to the t. Well, actually, the absolute value of e to the t. Why? Because we have something squared and then we're taking the square root of it. But hey, e to the t isn't gonna be negative, so we don't need those absolute values. All right, so what else do I need? If I'm using my third form, I'm gonna need the magnitude of the first derivative. <clears throat> our volume, our, oh, there it is. So then the magnitude of my first derivative. This is gonna be the square root of zero squared plus e to the t squared plus one squared. Very nice. So I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find that this is the square root power raised to a power u multiply. 
B to the 2T. Plus one. Fun. Now we have all the pieces to find our curvature using this form, our third form down there. So my curvature as a function of the parameter t is gonna be, using this guy, to the magnitude of the first cross the second, or e to the t, divided by um, this guy to the third. I'm gonna write that with rational exponents. And this is gonna be e to the 2t plus one. And then, that's to the third power. And then, that's the square root. Okay. And then what? You do a box and a flower. But wait, there's more. What if we wanted to actually evaluate that thing? What if t was, I don't know, zero is nice. So then my curvature at my parameter being zero, call it time, at time zero, where's this thing start? So the curvature at zero. This is e to the zero over e to the two times zero plus one to the three halves. Sure. So e to the zero, that's one. That's one. One and one, that's two. So what do you do? This is this is one over two to the three halves. Sure. And perhaps you want to rationalize that denominator. But I'm a box and a flag. A little something something on curvature.